Hello. In this video, we are going to discuss the integrated torque sensor, which is optionally available on Linmot's PRO2 linear rotary motors. You can tell if your PRO2 is equipped with a torque sensor by the TS01 in the product name. PRO2 motors with a torque sensor have an extra connector that is used to output the data from the sensor to the drive. In addition to cables for the linear and rotary motors, you will also need a sensor cable for the PRO2 torque sensor. The pinout of this cable can be found in the PRO2's installation guide. Note that the sensor outputs a differential analog signal and requires 24 volt power in order to operate. The differential analog signal must be connected to the drive's differential analog input. For example, for C1200 drives, it should be connected to X4.10 and X4.11. Consult your drive's installation guide for more information. Note that as the torque sensor measures the torque on the rotary stage, it should be connected to the drive that is controlling the rotary motor in your PRO2. If you only wish to monitor the torque in your drive or PLC, you can do so without the need for an access code. However, if you would like to make use of closed loop torque control, by closing the drive's PID loop around the torque sensor and commanding the drive to achieve certain torque values, you will need to make use of the protected technology function of force control, which requires an access key that can be purchased from Linmot or your local authorized distributor. More information on access codes and the implementation of force control is covered in a separate tutorial series. You can find links to these videos in the description below. PRO2 motors make use of plug and play in which the motor is defined automatically and the motor wizard does not need to be used. However, you can use the motor wizard to switch the unit system from linear to rotary so that your units will be consistent. Information on setting up the torque sensor in Linmot Talk can be found in the PRO2's installation guide. However, I'll show some of those steps here. First, we will define the input to which the torque sensor is connected. It uses a differential analog input, so we'll select that. Next, we will set up the parameters of the torque sensor. To account for the default positive moving direction, it is recommended to invert the signal from the torque sensor in these parameters here. Therefore, for the negative 10 volt force, we will input a value of positive 2.5 newton meters, and for the 10 volt force, we will use negative 2.5 newton meters. Limotalk 6.9 also contains a speed limiter function that can limit the speed of the motor as it attempts to reach the torque set point. This can prevent runaway motion if a torque is commanded but there is no resistance against the motor. For example, if I don't want the motor to move faster than one revolution per second as it attempts to reach the commanded torque, I can specify this in the speed limiter. Next, I need to program an offset so that the drive registers zero newton meters of when there is zero torque applied to the shaft. I can determine the value of this offset by making sure there is no torque on the shaft and going to the variables pane to check what differential analog voltage the drive is reading. Click the red circle with the clock inside to update the variables continuously. We can see that the drive is registering an analog voltage. To see the decimal value of this voltage, we can go to Options, Raw Data Display Mode, and change it to Decimal. We can now see that this corresponds to a value of around negative 1041. I can then take this value, take its inverse, and apply it as an offset to the differential analog input so that zero volts is properly registered by the drive, which I can verify in the drive's variables. I can now also see in the drive's variables that the drive is registering zero newton meters when there is no torque applied to the shaft. I can add this variable for measured force and any other variables I choose to monitor to the drive's control panel in this way, I can quickly check what torque the drive is measuring. Lastly, I can verify that the measured torque is updating properly as I apply both positive and negative torques to the output shaft. 
Thanks for watching.